Hey Guru Nation, welcome back to the clinicaltrialsguru.com. Nice day here. It is. Hello Beautiful. Chris. Beautiful. Beautiful day. So we're here in, in uh, San Bernardino at one of our clinics. Okay, and this is Chris Auber. So Chris oh. is a contracts and budgets expert. Okay, if you join uh, us as a client for our consulting firm, we negotiate your budgets for you. In addition to a whole bunch of other stuff like, most importantly, getting you studies, creating source docs, helping you with your SOPs, but negotiating your budgets. Yep. And I tell you what, the first budget we negotiate for you, you're gonna get our entire fee of one year reimbursed through that one budget we negotiate, right? I would think so. Well, especially if you don't negotiate to begin with. Especially if you don't know what you're doing, like if you're a research naive site. Exactly. Right? And for your experienced sites, you may not want us to do that. We'll just get studies for you and that'll be passive. Um, in addition to whatever biz dev stuff you you guys have going on. So, three takeaways that are important because we've done contract and budget webinars before. Mm -hmm. And videos, number of them. Number of them, but three takeaways are three things that we can just give to our viewers that we have not mentioned before, mm -hmm. okay? So the first one, I have mentioned it, but I'll say it again. These days, 2017, when you get a budget from a sponsor, most of the time, they're not gonna break down each visit by each assessment. All right, you're gonna have to do that. And what that means is, you're gonna have to look at the protocol, deconstruct it, visit by visit, and then you'll have to put fees for every assessment, okay? And that's difficult to do if you don't have any, any context, okay? So you're gonna have to network with other research sites if you can. Maybe if, if your competitors don't wanna network with you, which is understandable, you call someone on the other side of the country, right? Say, hey, I'm a new site. I mean, we should all be trying to help each other negotiate better contracts as sites because it helps everyone. A rising tide raises all ships, right? So uh, break down each protocol into each uh, assessment per visit. Uh, you can even Google typical procedure costs, Medicare, releases this information publicly. Uh, there's different ways you can get it even if you don't want to network. If you're like a hermit and don't network, you can still do it. That right? being said though, they do pay more than Medicare. They do pay more, so yeah. So when you look at Medicare, add in another 30%, which you can also add into your overhead, which we're not gonna get into in this video. Okay, second takeaway is a monitor, a change of monitor fee. Wanna talk about that? Well, it's pretty straightforward, right? Every time a monitor is changed, uh, you ex you will have negotiated prior to signing your contract, you will have negotiated this fee, right? So it can range, uh, I would say $1,000 um, is typical. Uh, for thousand every, bucks? Yeah, every time a monitor is changed throughout the study because there's a lot of work associated with this. That's the justification, your, right? Right, and it's gonna slow down your payments um, until the monitor is up to speed. Um, they're looking over the previous monitor's work and any number of other things. So um, why not get compensated for this? Okay, and number three, what was it? So uh, a lot of, with a lot of studies, there's assessments in which are costly. Uh, MRIs, you know, imaging, colonoscopies, and oftentimes maybe a site doesn't have the capital to afford the initial uh, startup screening phase of this, right? So sometimes you'll often have to screen five or six patients before you have a randomized patient at the start of a study, and you're not gonna start seeing those payments until months down the road. So maybe the capital is not there to be able to pay for five or six MRIs. Mm -hmm. So a good way to get around this is to ask for either a completed patient uh, payment, which is refundable, so if you enroll nobody at your site, you you are, you're gonna owe this. It's like a loan. Right, right? it's a loan for one completed patient. Interest-free loan. Exactly, so let's say a completed patient pays $30,000, you'll get a $30,000 uh, refundable fee. $30,000 refundable fee, we're not in a war zone. No, no. It only sounds like it. Outside motorcycle. Um, and another thing you can ask for is, you have your typical startup fee, you can also ask for a, maybe they don't wanna pay an entire uh, completed patient, but you can ask for a refundable startup fee, uh, which is the same concept. It's it's less, again, use the example of 30,000. It'd be less than 30,000, but maybe they'll give you 10,000 that's refundable. 
again, if you don't enroll a patient, you have to pay that 10,000 back and your startup fee, you don't pay back. But this is a refundable startup fee to help you cover those initial costs. Thank you, Chris, and we kept it right at five minutes. Thank you, Guru Nation, for watching. Dan and Chris from theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Take care.